once you get above that mystery five six hundred watts, uh, Cal, uh, you know, things anything can happen. Other things happen. When you look at high power relays for ham radio, and I'm talking the thousand to fifteen hundred watt range, mm -hmm. um, it's like a chunky automotive relay work for that. Or what's what's the, what spec do we look at for your, your average yeah. guy? You know, looking well, to do an experiment. Vacuum relays are probably the best way to do it, but they're uh -huh. stupid expensive. Right. Um, everything I've done has been with um, chunky automotive relay stuff. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, the stuff I sent over to you, um, mm. this, and I, I've got some solid state relays here I've been playing with, but um, I can tell you the solid state relays don't love anything above 100 watts yeah. no. okay they, fine. they tend they tend to lease the genie after that yeah. Yeah. so you've got a solenoid in the relay haven't you got these big contacts once the yeah. contact is firmly over yeah yeah there's no way in which you can just, switch this under power no no we'll yeah. come to that in a minute but no, no, assuming, no, no, no. <laughs> assuming it's firmly over as long as it's chunky enough and it, and it's got some pressure on that plate Mm -hmm. it's 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 a current a beast is it mm -hmm. more than anything else yeah yeah we're not that worried about flash over at this point here oh, once you know nah. once you get above that mystery five six hundred watts uh, Cal, uh you know things, anything can other happen things, other things happen then well yeah. at, at 1500 watts your voltage is about 700 and your amperage is somewhere around 16 or 18 amps yeah so you know you got to worry about the the voltage yeah. thing on there yeah um, and and do the solenoids worry about those very high intensive rf fields do you think i haven't had anything i haven't had any problems with that i have uh, put the uh, um diodes across the solenoids uh, but that's from a dc point of view so you don't get a you know a lag or, or anything like yeah. that in the, in the solenoids and mm. um or a back emf but yeah. uh, no, I haven't uh, had any experience uh, as, as far as that's concerned. And if somebody did switch a relay uh, at under power, would it li it would arc? I mean, slow motion as it <laughs> lifted, it would just arc and li literally sort of burn itself, burn the contacts. Yeah, that's one way of getting rid of a relay. Yes, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it it'd be an exciting thing, would it? Yeah. I yeah. think that's yeah, something yeah, we need yeah, to yeah. try. <laughs> Probably a rapid, unscheduled deconstruction. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the UK has just gone to this thousand watt thing, and yes. already last night I noticed someone whose amplifier spotted an arc fault. And when we're, and and so an ACOM amplifier like you've got a two thousand like I have, uh, yeah. Roly, that, and that that will spot the tiniest, presumably. Yeah. I don't know how it's measuring it, but it is. You know, I mean, I used to, uh, down at the Scout Hut, we had, you know, there was a lot of trees and foliage and stuff. And when I took the antenna down at the yeah. corner where it went into the tree, yeah. you could see um, where all the enamel had pitted off. And, yeah, and roughly, if you counted the amount of pits there was, that's roughly the same amount of arc faults we had. Yeah, you're trying oh, to bring it into resonance, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but it is funny because, you know, you, you put, you know, there's people that's all of a sudden going to realize I've gone from 400 watts, you know, and a lot of things are tolerable at 400 watts, yep. 1,000, 1,500 watts, things start happening. There's too much moisture yep. in the connection point. You know, There's going to be a great sale in connectors it, all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep, a, probably some a, 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 slight, a slightly loose barrel at 400 watts you can get away with. You you whack that with a kilowatt or, uh, and so on like that, and all yeah. of a sudden it goes, oops, I've got yeah. some current to deal with here. You I've, know. I've noticed that with some of my American customers. You know, there is literally a point. It's somewhere between six and 800 watts where it's not the physics changes, but it's what we're used to changes. Yep. You know what I mean? All of, yep. all of a sudden, you find out that you're you thought you had to some decent grade coax, and it's it's not, not the bar, you know. The yeah. actual coax, if you if you've got some really old coax, maybe there's a bit of moisture in it or or, <laughs> or whatever else, and you try to put too much power in it, and you've got a fancy amplifier that spots lots of faults, right, but physically in slow motion it, inside, is it would it normally be at the where the connectors are or could it, can there be breakdown inside it, it, the coax at a high it can be a breakdown oh. anywhere in the coax so yeah, it'll, it'll melt the dial the coax, yeah okay and it might flash through and then kind of not repair itself but sort of give up you know you could see yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever yeah. You, you wouldn't know where that was would you 
Nah, no, it, 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 it might kind of some fancy uh, uh, gear like um, yeah. uh, the stuff we use commercially. For instance, I can uh, whack that uh, piece of equipment on and then say measure to fault, and it'll it'll go oh, right. Okay, well, twenty one meters away from the from where you're measuring, yeah. we have a short circuit or an open circuit yeah. or, or right. uh, an impedance bump or something's gone wrong. With with that, would that fault be permanent or would it like your amplifier stops and, you know, you, you go, well, what went wrong there? And then you apply yeah. a small amount of power. And it's, no, it's oh, all it over, Rover. Uh, it's, you know, it's all over. Get, right. Okay. Yeah, take the coax out and ditch it and get some, yeah. uh, get some yeah. high quality messy and polony cable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, we're not sponsored yeah. by messy and polony, but hello, Stefano. Yeah. No, we're not, but uh, I can assure you it's great, great, great cable. Yeah. yeah I met uh, Stefano down in Orlando. Great guy. Uh, um, oh, did you? Nice. Okay. Yeah. So He's the voltage. Just, um, yeah, yeah. Go on. Go ahead, John. 1500 watt voltage is. RMS is 275 volts. Uh, peak to peak is 775. So, 775, right. Okay. Yeah. So eventually there's going to be a breakdown. Yeah. 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 In your dielectric, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, the moral of the story, if you're going to do this, uh, please do not switch under power, uh, under any no. power. Yeah. No. Not, not, no, even, no. Uh, not even QRP power, because even at 10 watts, you will get an arc. Right, it won't get, won't cause you any damage, but you'll get an arc, and now you yeah. set yourself up uh, uh, with carbonized um, uh, contacts Contact. and all like that. Yeah. So when you do go back to QRO, you wonder what on earth has happened. You know? Yeah, right. Yeah. Is there anything else people should watch out for if they go from you know, they're a two hundred watt station, and they buy a fifteen hundred watt amplifier? I'd be interested to know what other. Well, basically, what other shit can happen? <laughs> but it's well, need to make well, sure you find that uh, if you've got a uh, a dipole, for instance, yeah. <clears throat> you you've uh, got to uh, terminate the coax and then go out onto both legs of your dipole. Um, at a hundred watts, you could probably even just wrap the joints and uh, get away with it. You can't do that with a kilowatt mm. and, uh, and things like that. And all of a sudden, you find that um, maybe the uh, the the gunk you've used to seal the end of that coax is fine at uh, two, three, four hundred watts, but get up to a kilowatt and starts breaking down. And think, you know, just weird things like that. Yeah, well, John, yeah, you had a comment. Yeah, so two things with that, you know, toroids in your balance, right? Okay. Oh, if you've got if you got something like an off center fed dipole or a uh, end fed. You yeah. got to have bigger balance because those things will saturate or they'll overheat when you yeah. have that big mismatch. Yes. So all that power is going to sit there and just start cooking that balance. Yeah. So that's one. Coax is another. Make sure you're not trying to push 1500 watts over RG X for yeah. any kind of distance, right? Because you're yeah. going to melt the dielectric. Right. Um, you know, that's and, and then actually the wire in your antenna, right? If yeah. you're using, you know, 13, 13 gauge wire or something like the DX10. <laughs> Um, yeah. You're fine, but if you're using, you know, 18 gauge speaker wire or 20 gauge wire, yeah. you might be uh, replacing that pretty quick at those kinds. Yeah, of, yeah, yeah. And yeah I've also yeah. noticed at higher frequencies like uh, 12 meter band and 10 meter band. If you've, I mean, I'm in, I'm in the habit of folding the end of my element over dipoles mm -hmm. or whatever, you know, and just kind of right. get a bit of paracord or whatever. But that very end piece. Yep. Um, what's it doing there? Uh, Roly, is it? Well, you've got a very high voltage there, yeah. and, uh, and, and it's at, at that sharp cut off side cut of uh, termination, you've got an extremely high voltage on a very, very small point, and yeah. it'll just corona, it just coronas the atmosphere, and you get this mm. nice little uh, corona ball for, uh, yeah. forming. And that's yeah. got a tremendous amount of heat, and, that, and now your insulation starts to burn. and yeah. it, it, Yep. Yeah, and you did an experiment for me. Actually, you <laughs> took the end of a yeah. ten meter wire, and then you re-terminated it, so it wasn't yeah. a sharp end. If, it was a, you, uh, a soft end. You're right. If if you make a little um, a loop at the end of the wire and 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 uh, twist it back on itself and solder it, you know, so mm. you've got a instead of now a sharp end uh, cut end, you've got a, a loop formed. Then. Then you've got a, a, a bigger area for this that corona to try and have to form on. It, it, you've and got it can't. To form, it won't, John, it won't uh, form a corona. John, a couple of years ago, Rowley and I had an interesting problem. It was a customer, and it was the 17-meter element 
but he'd come up, he'd come back about, and it was sticking out at right angles. Mm-hmm. Do you remember that one, Roly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and he sent the picture; it all melted to the ground. But that's <laughs> because exactly what you said. You know, it wasn't t- it wasn't tidy. You know, it went up, back, and then out. Yeah, and uh, it must Form, have uh, formed a ground of wall with, uh, right up against the uh, side of the pole, basically. So you just you burnt your fiberglass pole to the smithereens. No, you cut it short, John. Thank you very much, John. Yeah, likewise. Uh, I've, I've got to do Ro- a bit. Ro of needs to go out. Uh, John needs to get up. Right. Okay. <laughs> Thank Guys, you, Jets. Seventy-three. Thank Cheers, Ron. So Thanks. Cheers, Bye-bye John. Now. Cheers, Phil. Cheers. Thanks, Rolly. See you. Bye. Thanks, boys. Bye.